1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Since it is Independence Day, we're going to be doing a chaplain's report that reflects that. Let's look at a passage in James chapter 1, verses 23 through 25. And if you'll look there at the passage of Scripture, you'll see, For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who, he is like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror, for once he has looked at himself and gone away, he has immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. But one who looks intently at the perfect law, the law of liberty, and abides by it, not having become a forgetful hearer, but an effectual doer, this man will be blessed in what he does. So in this particular passage, James is talking about the perfect law of liberty, which I think is wholly appropriate for the 4th of July. Now, I want you to really understand the context that James is coming from here. Remember that when he opens the book of James, and this is still in the first chapter, he addresses it to the lost tribes of Israel. So he is writing to a Hebrew audience. The law that they were accustomed to, the law of Moses, as good as it was, and it was, but as good as it was, it was not a law of liberty. It was a law of conviction. That it would inform you of the sin, and Paul talks a lot about this in his epistles too. It informs you of your sin, and informs you how to avoid your sin, but it offers no redemption. Once you are guilty of breaking the law, you are guilty of breaking the whole law. It's very different than what we're seeing here. James is talking about this as a law of liberty. Why? Because even though we are all violators of the law, the law of liberty is, but Jesus Christ came and died and shed his blood so you could have the redemption of your sins. That's a law of liberty. That is a law that liberates mankind. And so he's drawing this distinction here. And one thing that I wanted to observe when we're talking about liberty and we're sort of in the mindset of freedom, that liberty, according to James, requires three things that we see in this passage of Scripture. First is self-evaluation. He gives the metaphor of a man looking in the mirror. And then when he walks away from the mirror, he forgets who he was. So an important part of freedom is self-evaluation. You have to take an honest look at yourself. If you're going to be a free individual that is operating in a society, if you want to benefit the world, if you want to be a force for good in that system, you have to constantly ask yourself questions if what you are doing is right or wrong. You have to be able to, and be honest about it, you have to be able to look at your behavior and say, is this acceptable, is this not acceptable? That's something that a people that are operating in a free society have to be able to do. I think that a lot of the problems we're seeing in the country today are the result of too little self-reflection. How many times do we hear people say that, that they're special and they, they grow up hearing all the time, you're, you're so special. You're special. You're, you're perfect just the way you are. That's the opposite of self-reflection. That just assumes that you're right no matter what, and it's an unhealthy way to look at the world. You see, self-reflection, evaluating yourself, and looking at the kind of person that you are, is going to spur on better behavior than you currently have. If you believe that you're already right about everything, if you believe that your emotions are all justified and that if you feel it, it must be true and nobody can tell you differently, then you're never going to do any self-reflection because you believe that all of your behavior is already justified. That the things that you're doing, regardless of how good or bad they are, regardless of how they affect other people, that that behavior must be correct. That's what a lack of self-evaluation does. I get so sick of it. People talk so much about having great self-esteem. There's nothing wrong with having good self-esteem. But do you know what group of people have the highest self-esteem? People in prison. I'm not making this up. They've actually done psychological studies about it. People in prison have ridiculously high self-esteem. Why? 
because they have justified their own actions in their mind. They do bad things because A, they think they're competent enough to get away with it, and B, they think that anybody that stops them in that, for the most part, that they're the ones that are wrong. There's a lack of self-evaluation going on there. The second part that we need for liberty to take place is intentionality. You see, the person that walks away from the mirror and forgets who he is, that's a person that actually has done self-evaluation. Check that one off the list. The problem is they didn't remember what they evaluated. The problem is when they walked away, they forgot what they saw. And so what he's saying is, as important as self-evaluation is, it needs to be followed up. You can't just leave it hanging out there. It has to be intentional. It's not going to happen by happenstance. You're not going to be able to just be walking down the street and you eventually mature and get into a better person. This is the poison of the progressive mindset. It believes that humanity goes in a, a single curve upward, that the, the line of history is one of constant progress. It's not true. There have been societies that regressed in history. There have been societies that did really good things and really bad things. I mean, look at Germany, for example. Germany was arguably the most advanced, most prosperous nation on earth before World War I. And look what happened to it. They went in the wrong direction. And so you can have, an, if you don't have that intentionality, if you don't do that self-evaluation and remember it, and make an intentional effort to correct the things that are wrong and improve on the things that you're, you're kind of going in the right direction on, that self-evaluation just isn't going to do you any good. And then the third thing that you really need is responsibility. And I get that the other two things are part of responsibility, but responsibility is really this kind of idea that James is driving home here, where he talks about the perfect law of liberty, he says, and abides by it. So it's not enough to know the law, and it's not enough to know yourself. You have to also make an effort to abide by it. You see, if you understand faith the way that the Bible explains faith, you understand that faith is also always followed up with action, or else it's not really faith. If you look at, for example, Hebrews in the 11th chapter, it always says, by faith, X person did X. So by faith, Abraham left his home country and sojourned with God. By faith, Moses left his, his home as, as being a shepherd and pursued after freeing Israel and leading them into the promised land. And there are countless examples there, but what it all goes down to is that if we are to have real faith, what faith looks like is action. In order to really have faith, that has to be followed up by a, not, not even necessarily something that's just symbolic, an actual change in our lives that shows that that belief is real. Because if we believe something, but don't actually respond to it, have we really done any good? James will actually talk about this later in his own letter here, where he says, well, the devils believe and they tremble. What good is that to them? They believe in God, so what? And so there's a difference in belief and faith, and that's what James is kind of hinting at, and we'll get to a little bit later in his book, that to have freedom, to really take advantage of this law of liberty, the liberty that we have from sin, that's going to take responsibility. That's an idea that is an American as it comes. John Adams understood that the country, our constitution, would only function as long as we had a good and moral people. He said it is wholly inadequate for the governance of anything else or any, any other kind of people. And he was right. If we're not able to honestly evaluate ourselves, if we are not able to honestly make an intentional effort to do better, and we take responsibility for our own actions, we abide in the law, we abide in that goodness, then tyranny is going to come for us. Because the people that are not good are going to need some kind of master. Think about it this way. If you're in a tyrannical state, do you need much self-evaluation? No, because if you're wrong, they will tell you in no uncertain terms. They'll do like they've been doing in China the past couple days and just go in and raid your house or raid your business and they'll take care of you. Self-evaluation isn't something that's all that instrumental to people that aren't free. Intentionality. That's not something that's all that big a deal if you're living in a tyrannical state. You don't have to worry about your intentions a whole lot because they're going to make you do what they want you to do. If you don't have, if you don't have 
intention or sorry, if you don't have freedom, then that intentionality doesn't matter much because you're essentially a slave and they will tell you what to do. And then there's responsibility. Well, if you're just a faceless, nameless cog in the machine, then responsibility is really not yours. Responsibility is the people that are, you know, your overlords. And so we see very quickly that even though James is talking about spiritual freedom and the law of liberty, and we're talking about physical freedom and, and freedom within our country, the concepts are the same. James understood in order to take advantage of the freedom of a Christian, this new law that we have that replaces the old law, that was just about convicting people, we have to have these three things. For our nation to remain free, we must self-regulate. And for us to remain a part of the kingdom of God, we also have to self-regulate. Stay the course, friends. It's not exactly a secret that YouTube really doesn't like conservatives, so I'm asking for your help. I don't want to stick it to them, I just genuinely want to show them that conservative voices do matter, and that there is a big, passionate audience out there that wants to hear them. So give us a like and subscribe, remembering to click the notification bell, and show YouTube that you do want more content like this. Sincerely, thank you.